Hello everyone and welcome to the condensed version of my Around the World in 80 Planes flights in X-Plane 11. Previously I had released the entire flights in videos, so they were hour-long videos, mostly involving us listening to Apollo 12 and Apollo 13 audio while I occasionally made some notes, but I understand that people can't sit through those sorts of things, and so I'm gonna produce all the flights in four videos. This is the first flight with the Harrier, a NASA livery Harrier taking off from Cape Canaveral. I'm trying a short takeoff here, but we are fully loaded with fuel, so it's a little bit heavy. Still, we take off at 80-ish uh, uh, knots, it looks like there. And we're headed to Detroit, and this is actually one of the longer flights. When I planned all the flights, I aimed for about one hour, uh, though I varied it a little bit based on where I wanted to go. And overall, we are going to be covering a distance that's greater than the circumference of the Earth. We will cross the equator, and so it's a proper around-the-world thing. And it is 80 flights in 80 planes. So this is the first plane, and you can see some of the views. A lot of the scenery is ortho 4 xp scenery. It's free scenery for X-Plane 11, but it's not the default scenery. Here we are approaching Detroit. I'm keeping each of the flights to one or two minutes here. Of course, you can go back to the original videos to see the full things and see all my uh, sloppy flying. I am flying all the missions without autopilot. Ooh, that's a little bit of an iffy landing, but you have to remember that the Harrier has inline landing gear and has these wingtip landing gears, so it does tend to wobble a bit like that. But anyway, the next flight was a Lancer Legacy FG, which is a fixed gear. And I chose this plane because it would take about an hour, a little bit over an hour, to get to Toronto like this. And I planned the legs first and then picked which plane would best fit them. And so there's a very different plane than the one before. This is a freeware by Nicholas. I forgot to mention that the Harrier was a payware by X Trident. As we flew over Detroit, uh, we didn't fly over Detroit with the Harrier because the airport's on the south end, and so it was more convenient to do it on this flight. But you can see a flap overspeed. One of the flaps, I don't know why, I have my flaps up, uh, but maybe it was reading the flap axis wrong because I have it on an axis. Maybe that's not the best thing. But um, one of the flaps went off, and so I had to use aileron trim to compensate. That'll cause a lot of problem on landing because when we're slow, it's more pronounced. But anyway, that's uh, Detroit as I have it in X-Plane 11 right now. Now, I did have a graphics card upgrade in between all these flights. I started out with a GTX 970, that's what I'm flying with here. Ultimately, I, ha I got a RTX 2070 thanks to a viewer, satellite 999, so a uh, nice upgrade for me for the later flights. Also, uh, these videos have been stored in a more compressed format. Later flights I'll have in the full format, but I didn't preserve these in the full original format, unfortunately. So these are a little bit lower quality videos than the originals. Anyway, approaching Toronto here. And for some reason I don't have avionics. <laughs> well, at least I don't have the, the fancy electronic screens. I've still got the backup avionics. So that caught me by surprise and I still have no idea why that happened. And yeah, the frame rates around all the cities is gonna be a bit choppy. Here I'm trying to compensate for the fact that one of my flaps is gone and I couldn't use flaps to land because that would make it worse. So I had to try and keep it up. Uh, but yeah, uh, still uh, we landed safely. And here the Lancer Legacy taxis. Next up is a flight from Toronto to New York in the stock Boeing 737-800X modified by Zebo. So this is the Zebo 737, and here we go. Air Canada livery as appropriate from Toronto. Unfortunately, the information in the top left is incorrect. In later flights, I'll get rid of that entirely. That was more for when I was doing live streams, and people would walk in and want to know what the flight was and where I was going. But yeah, less important here. There, I fixed it there. Uh, there is Toronto from a greater height than we saw with the Lancer Legacy. It is worth mentioning why I don't have the original audio, the engine whine and all. That's because I would have my original talking and also the Apollo 12 and 13 audio at the same time with it. It's all bundled into one audio track, unfortunately, and I couldn't separate it out. I had a little bit of a windshield uh, fogging issue there and turned out that the auto start did not include the window heat. So I turned on the window heat and here we are approaching New York. There's Manhattan to our left. And uh, I think that's scenery I actually imported from from uh, Flight Sim 10. 
Though, there is a good Manhattan scenery available for X-Plane 11. So you can use that. We can sort of see the Statue of Liberty down there. The frame rate is very low. There's also clouds. that The clouds always have a huge frame rate impact. I'll be interested to see how all this looks in the upcoming Microsoft Flight Sim as well. That would be good. So here we go. And gingerly trying to be careful this time. Minimize how many sloppy landings I do. But there will be sloppy landings. I'm not really a pilot kind of pilot, I'm more of a aircraft designer kind of pilot, so I like to get the feel of planes, push them to their limits, a little bit of a test pilot kind of pilot, but not really. Um, it's more about seeing how a variety of planes work in different flight simulators, of course I could compare the same plane in different flight simulators and that is of interest to me. I'm not really very detail oriented unfortunately when it comes to flying, uh, it's more of a comparative thing. But anyway, here is the Beechcraft King Air C-90, uh, flight 4 from New York to Boston, a very short flight, 162 nautical miles, less than an hour it took, and there's the default uh, King Air C-90, no modifications to it. There we see Boston, and again, the cities will be a bit laggy, but I'm trying to choose the best shots here, and there is a lot of autogen involved. And here we go with the touchdown. That's a little bit hard. But I the problem here was I think my eye point was set a little bit too low. I really should be seated a little bit higher up. I'm a tall fellow. So that didn't give me a very good view of the runway right there or a very good sense of where I was at. Anyway, uh, there we go. Oh, there's a truck in my way. Stupid truck. Anyway, next up is the Coronado Embraer Phenom. So this is a payware plane. Uh, an insufferably cute payware plane that I couldn't resist when it was on sale. And it is 360 nautical miles from Boston to Halifax. And it takes about an hour with this plane. So there's our final view of Boston as we climb. This plane uh, had a little bit of trouble trimming out at the top at, of the climb. But anyway, the views were good, as you can see. In the bottom right, you can see the C, O, and A menus and down there. That's uh, always a good indication that it's a Caronado plane. They always have those same sort of functional features. And here we go, approaching Halifax. Unfortunately, the weather was remarkably bad. Um, you can sort of see the trees there to give a sense. Of course, you can see my instruments as well. I decided to just fly below the clouds as much as possible for fun. Uh, well. Sometimes you have to take advantage of the fact that it's a simulator and not real life. Probably should not do it this way in real life, but there is the runway. So here we go. Might even be a better landing than the one with uh, some of the other planes. Yeah, uh, pretty soft. It's okay. Alright, so there we are at Halifax. I mean, what kind of weather was I expecting at Halifax, to be honest? Anyway, so there the Phenom. <laughs> I actually have to taxi quite a way to get to a taxiway. And the next plane is a Hawker Siddeley Trident. This is by Michael Wilson. It is freeware, although Michael Wilson had produced some payware as well. And this is uh, sort of an older one. I think it, it seems like it's from X-Plane 10 and just imported in. And uh, the flight is 477 nautical miles, takes about an hour. I'll do a full tally at the end of these 20 flights in this video. Uh, here, the clouds sort of break up and ultimately in Newfoundland, when we reach St. John's, it is a little bit easier to see the runway. You can see the approach here and uh, and the instruments that we have in the Trident. I do like three engine airliners. I have Michael Wilson's L-1011 for instance. I also have the FlyJ Sim 727, which is very nice and we'll see later on in the flights. But here we go, landing at St. John's and taxiing in the night. And next up, uh, bright and early for the Concorde. Now there's a freeware Concorde. This is by Gun1, G-H-U-N-1 on the X-Plane uh, forums, uh, X-Plane.org forum. And I probably pulled up a little bit too vigorously there, but I didn't strike the tail, I swear. And there has since been the release of a more sophisticated payware Concorde, but this one is pretty good too. Uh, it's not at that level, but uh, it's it's actually pretty good for freeware, I mean, as you can see. So the instrument panel is definitely the right instrument panel and everything. Uh, and it performs properly. 
It doesn't have all the bells and whistles and not the engineer panel or anything like that. But yeah, so this was good. But of course now I'd fly the Payware Concorde since I have that. And we are approaching Keflavik in Iceland. And that's the airport you see there. It took me a few tries to get the landing. I uh, get the Concorde slow enough so that I could land properly. And it's always a little bit tricky to land the Concorde. The nose down and everything. Still the view is not great. And it always catches me by, by surprise how far the nose has to drop when you get the nose wheel down. You can sort of see it's going down there and then now the nose wheel hits the ground. Well, that's why we have, you know, it, it really has a high angle of attack there. So, yep, yeah, there it is taxiing. And next up is another high performance plane. This is the Avril Vulcan. This is also a freeware. This is by Dom Henry, uh, who produces quite a lot of very good freeware planes for X-Plane 11. And this Avril Vulcan, I had, I had some fuel issues that um, I'm not entirely sure about, but anyway, we work through it, and here it goes. Huge wing, huge wing, flying from Keflavik to Glasgow, in Scotland. So that will uh, conclude our crossing of the Atlantic. A payware version of the Avro Vulcan has since been released, but I don't have that one, so I can't say anything about it. And to be honest, this is probably good enough for me. It is a remarkable plane, and certainly very interesting to fly and as far as being an aircraft designer it obviously it's it's very interesting it's just very interesting but uh there is scotland there and we are working our way around to glasgow originally i had wanted to land at edinburgh but uh that airport didn't seem quite right so i decided to change to glasgow and there's our runway not a huge view out the windows from this. And it's a little bit finicky. Also, there are a lot of trees around this runway. <laughs> Not sure that's how that's supposed to work. I think the autogen has gone a little bit crazy on us. But there we go. And yeah, those taxiways. I, I think this, this uh, airport might not be suited to this plane. I don't know. But next up for Flight 9 is the Spitfire. This Spitfire is a freeware, and I think this is the Dom Henry one, but there's also a Timan 68 freeware one. Yeah, but that's a Spitfire Mark 1. This is one of the later variants. And so this is what it looks like from inside. And yeah, flying a tail dragger is tough, and now I've got the flap overseat speed problem again. Since then, I have fixed the axis, sort of. I created more of a dead zone. Uh, close to where it's at zero flaps so that it doesn't accidentally read the flap axis as having some value and I think that's fixed the problem but anyway I'll have that flap over speed problem a few times and I just want to mention it so that you know I had to do the aileron trim and the landing's gonna be a bit sloppier because of that anyway a nice view uh, we fly over the Isle of Man and that's the Isle of Man there I think and overall, it was a nice flight, except the Spitfire seems to consume fuel like crazy. And so the fuel management was a little bit tough. But we got to Dublin. It, I mean, we sh it shouldn't have been a problem because Glasgow to Dublin is only 161 nautical miles. But I'll have to review the fuel consumption on this at some point. And there's me just flying around. I'm looking at the buildings, that's all. Uh, in the very very inadvisable way and here's the approach to the runway a little bit low and uh, here I'm I think struggling against the f busted flap thing also I hate tail draggers so <laughs> I mean I, uh, it's not like tail draggers like the Piper Cobb or anything like that it's the tail draggers like the ones with the huge engines in front right all the World War II tail draggers they cause a whole lot of problems because of the sheer power and torque that they have involved with their engine. But here we go. Uh, uh, oh, oh no! No, no! If this was a payware one, I bet it'd be busted to all heck. But thankfully, thankfully it's a freeware one, so it's a little bit more forgiving. But yeah, so we're we're safe. We're safe. Uh, it survived, but. Uh, yeah, I just... 
Yeah, tail draggers. Anyway, next is something completely different. Uh, flight 10 from Dublin to Manchester in ATR 72-500 is a freeware one by Riviere. And yeah, I, not a plane I'd normally fly, but it had Aer Lingus livery, so I thought it'd be... Pr I tried to match the planes with where we're flying as much as possible. That's not always possible, but yeah, I try. But anyway, overflying Dublin, getting a good look, and off across the Irish Sea to Britain. There are clouds, but nice fluffy clouds, nothing too problematic. We are not in Halifax territory here, and it's mostly sunny. I think that's Liverpool. I think I flew over Liverpool first and then continued on to Manchester. Yeah, I think this is Liverpool, so hopefully there are some recognizable buildings. That building, there's a building to our right. I, I think somebody mentioned what it was, but I have no idea about that. I don't remember what it was. I hope that's a real thing. I doubt it's just random autogen. Anyway, so here is the landing at Manchester Airport, uh, EGCC. A little bit high. No, I guess it's all right. I'm really taking my time here, though. Uh, you can do it. There you go. All right. So that is down. And taxiing. So that's the ATR-72. Next is uh, one of the shortest flights of the series. This is Manchester to Birmingham in a de Havilland Chipmunk. Again, I felt that it was an appropriate thing to fly around here. And it's 57 nautical miles, but the chipmunk takes close to an hour to do that, so I decided to go with it. And when I say takes an hour, I mean with some touring around and taking a look at things, as I did. But once again, we had a flap over speed issue. Yeah, so a little bit of compensation for that. But with the chipmunk, it's not as bad as it is with some of the other planes. And I don't remember which city we're passing by there. There are a few places that I took a look at. I think this must be Birmingham. Not the highest quality ortho photos, but I was aiming to get huge swaths of area for ortho photos. Like most of the flight area will be covered by ortho photos. So that took a lot of drive space. So I wasn't always able to get the best quality. Anyway, uh, fighting things a little bit. But hopefully we won't be tossed around like we were in the Spitfire, at least. Come on. Come on. Chipmunks do not normally take this long to land. Up. Up. I think we're okay. Yep, we're not hopping or anything. That's another problem with tail draggers, of course. The hopping problem. That happens. But this, this is alright. The chipmunk is fairly easy to fly. That's why it's a trainer. And taxiing. Next up is a C-47 from Birmingham to London. And so this will be a landing at Heathrow. But of course we're going to fly over London itself. And that's going to be a lag monster. This is the Aeroworks C-47. So it's a freeware. But it's a very high quality freeware. I made delivery from... I, I adapted delivery from another version of the DC-3 slash C-47 and adapted it for this, but it hasn't turned out quite right. It's the that's all brother delivery, so I need some work. But you can see the dials and the interior and everything. It's very nice. It's probably my favorite freeware plane for X-Plane 11, to be honest. Anyway, there's London and... Uh, there's some weird autogen, as I swear there's a lot of overlapping scenery weirdness going on here. Uh, so, uh, since then I've gotten the Orbix to Earth scenery for Southern Britain, and that, well, I mean it looks better, but there's still a lot of lag in the area unfortunately. I might produce a video with that later on, just to show how it looks. It also produced some crashes, but I think that was because of different scenery overlapping with it. Uh, it is... it's tough to run that True Earth scenery, to be honest. 
It's not worse frame rates than what you see here, but I have had the graphics card upgrade since this. So, but it's not worse than the Ortho 4 XP scenery that I had before and all the other... I think there's some additional scenery going on there too. Uh, X-Plane 11 itself has some London landmarks and there was other landmark pa packages that I think I had. So, anyway, approaching the runway at Heathrow. This is a DC-3, so tail dragger or not, it shouldn't be hard to land past self. <laughs> um, there, we, uh, there we go, a nice soft... Oh, did we hop? Uh, no, I think we're just wobbling a bit. I don't think we hopped there. I'm just letting it slow down on its own. You can't really force the tail draggers to do anything until they slow down. Uh, you don't want to really apply the brakes, otherwise you'll nose into the ground. Just let them be as they're slowing down. Anyway, the next one is a really interesting plane, and one that I hadn't heard of until I saw it on the on the forums. And this is the Paris Jet 3 by Michael Wilson, a freeware. And yeah, a very unconventional plane. And I love finding these uh, when they're available for flight sims. I had a bit of a cloud error that turns out to be uh, because I hand updated X-Vision, which is a plugin that handles some of the atmospherics. And so, yeah, I needed to update that. And uh, I think there was a fix in the Lua settings. There's Lua scripts that a lot of this stuff runs on. Lots of lag around Paris because I've got some really great freeware Paris scenery thanks to a French group. And you can see the Arc de Triomphe, the Eiffel Tower there. And so, yeah. This is great scenery, but also severely lag-inducing scenery. But here we are at Charles de Gaulle Airport in Paris after a flight from London to Paris, of course. That's what we were doing with the Paris jet. Makes sense. And yeah. Touchdown. Okay. And a little bit of skidding around there. So if you haven't tried out the Paris Jet 3 yet, it's a delightfully unconventional plane, an early business jet kind of thing. And also was used as a military trainer. Speaking of military, next up was the Mirage 3, also a freeware, uh, this by Norin. And there's a lot of variants, it's a fairly complicated package, but had a lot of trouble getting off the ground. As you can see, we're going pretty fast, and it's just not rotating. And I'm, at, I'm actually drifting off to the right there because I thought it'd be uh, off the ground a little bit earlier. But yeah, we're not carrying a... I guess we're carrying a bit, but still, I was sort of surprised. I did test fly the Mirage 3 in DCS World before, and I'm pretty sure it took off a little bit faster than that. I mean, not faster, I mean sooner. Anyway, we're going from Paris to Lyon here, and that's what the cockpit looks like. It's, it's fairly nice. I mean, uh, for a freeware plane, it's very nice. But um, it's shaking. I don't know why it's shaking. <laughs> That's a, that, that was another peculiarity. I, I didn't know why I was... You can see it's sh shuddering. So I decided to go slower with it instead of where I was going at there. It's still going to be a very quick flight. It's only, it was only 44 minutes and the flight was only 223 nautical miles. But that's because of further plans. A lot of the flights in Europe are fairly short so that I can do some sightseeing and stuff like that. Uh, in fact, the next four flights are all under 100 nautical miles because I was sightseeing. So anyway, here we are landing at Lyon. And actually, uh, the Mirage was better handled now than at the start, though sort of off to the left there was nice. But anyway, when you have to land, you have to land. Okay. Yep. So at least it was able to land slower than it took off at. Of course, it doesn't have flaps or anything, so what was I expecting, I suppose. Next up is a very nice freeware plane, the Walton 520. Again, an unconventional plane. And this by Beber, B-E-B-E-R, on the xplane.org forum. And yeah, the interior is quite remarkable as far as the dials are concerned. They are custom. And deliveries are pretty good too. Uh, it's the Walton. Uh, I, I can't pronounce it. It's D-E-W-O-I-T-I-N-E, -E, and it's the D-520. It's a French fighter aircraft, that's why I'm flying it from Lyon to Geneva. And short flight, which is sort of a shame, and it was only half an hour with this plane. I would not have minded having a little bit more time with it. Uh, this is flight 15 now, 
and we were just passing by Geneva Airport and uh, flying around Geneva because why not uh, again it was a short flight and here is the approach and we'll get a good look inside and you'll be able to see the dials there I mean look at those those are looking pretty good right there definitely custom yeah I was very impressed but here we are a little bit shaky but and also we're gonna be doing tail dragging things I don't remember how this landing was Ooh. it seems a bit fast but I don't know much about this plane this was one of my first times flying it and yeah it looks like it was a bit fast and we're gonna be doing some hopping up up again yeah also, the dials were in units that I wasn't familiar with. I'm, I've got to make all the excuses here. <laughs> uh, oh, that was particularly rough. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. Are we done yet? Nope, th there's another one. Okay, stop, please. Please, stop hopping now okay I think it's solid on the ground here all right and then we taxi yeah well if this was uh, basically payware planes are just better at damage modeling I feel like mainly mainly they cause you more pain is what you're paying for anyway next up uh, flight 16 from Geneva to Sion with a Phoenix U15 this is actually a payware uh, powered glider it's a motor glider by V Sky Labs, and I decided I'd change the livery because the plain white was uninspiring. But yeah, it's fairly affordable. I uh, wanted a powered glider, and I mean, it's not, I mean, obviously, it's gonna be heavier than a regular glider, so it's not gonna glide as well, but it's uh, convenient. It's convenient. This flight was only 51 nautical miles, took 47 minutes. So it's not a flat, fast plane or anything, but this is one of my favorite flights to go from Geneva to Sion in the middle of the Alps. I think that's the River Rhone and it uh, has its outlet in Lake Geneva. So that's uh, one of the nicer flights and I expect that I'll be uh, duplicating it in Microsoft Flight Sim 2020, especially if I try out a glider. I'm not doing much gliding here because it would... I, I don't actually know about the thermals in X-Plane 11. I haven't really tried it out. There are gliders for X-Plane 11, but I wonder how the glider vis visualization or feedback is in the new Flight Sim. And in Flight Sim 10, it was actually really easy. They had a lot of visuals, uh, sort of cheaty visuals, of course, but... Okay, here we are touching down. That's fairly simple. I mean, this is a very kind plane. Lots of instrumentation, you'll notice and uh, a very plush interior. I think it was a red leather interior. It's very nice. Next up is a freeware plane and there's the Pilatus PC6 Porter and I can't even imagine a more appropriate plane for crossing the Alps than this. As uh, The glider is good for the valleys and then this is, you can see Yeti Airlines, that's a good name for something crossing the Alps too. Um, but this is a freeware version from Tim C. Clayton originally, and then further uh, converted by Zakudan. And yeah, a really nice plane, easy to get off the ground with, very short landing, uh, takeoff and landing. And yep, there is the Matterhorn, so I fly around the Matterhorn. Very nice rendition of it with the still Ortho 4 XP scenery here, so it is available. Uh, you could download the, this sort of scenery for free and we are approaching Milan it was from Sion to Milan and it took about 40 minutes and for some reason the speedometer is like opposite from the way I'm used to normally I expect it to go anyway you know have the higher numbers to the left but anyway we're riding it there and again this is a fairly simple plane to fly very forgiving so don't hurt it uh, uh, okay, I just park off to the side there. I didn't have the patience to taxi for one reason or another. 
And next, I was flying in a Piper Cub. Speaking of being patient, from Milan to Genoa. This is actually a longer flight, and the Cub is, uh, frankly, slower. But this is a good place to put it. And this is a freeware Piper Cub. I think it's by A Pilot. But I'm not 100% sure on that. So I fly around Milan a bit, though I didn't have any particularly special scenery around Milan. And for a lot of this flight, I stayed in the cockpit actually, because it's very easy to look out of. The exterior view, for the most part during the Around the World in a Plane series, as you've noticed already, I stayed on the exterior view and used other information uh, through a plugin to display on a different monitor. Here I also have the information in the upper left because people requested that, and the other information I was displaying in the upper left wasn't very useful because it was in the video description and all. So there we are. We don't do a whole lot of night flights in this series, but here we are approaching Genoa at night, and this sort of valley in between the coastal range, and there's some of Genoa flying fairly low here. Very nice looking. To be honest though, by this point I was getting a little bit tired of tail draggers. Thankfully the next few flights are not with tail draggers. I've, I've never been particularly good with them. Well, some of them. It depends. But here we are with the Piper Cub and it's getting tossed around a little bit. And there's a lot of compression artifacts for some reason, I don't know why. The bitrate should have been good enough. Um, well, anyway, here we are. I'm too low obviously, but that was because of the sightseeing. And just, I mean, it's a Piper Cub, for heaven's sakes. <laughs> Please tell me you can land this past self. Okay. This isn't exactly the attitude that you want, but. Okay. Uh, uh okay. Uh, what happened? I can't see the ground very well anymore. Okay, I, th I think we hopped there. Okay, we're hopping again. We're hopping and we're hopping. Okay. But now we're safe. Okay. There wasn't a good taxiing shot of it in the dark, so next up is the 19th flight from Genoa to Rome, and this is the Piaggio P180 Avanti. Definitely appropriate for this flight. And one plane that I wish was in Microsoft Flight Sim, but they went with a whole bunch of conventional sort of things instead of anything particularly interesting. I really like experimental planes and planes that you don't normally get to fly. Those are the ones I want to fly in flight sims. But, and, you know, the Piaggio P180 isn't the rarest plane ever, but it's certainly unconventional and so that makes it a little bit more fun. And a payware version of this I, I would consider getting. Beechcraft Starship I miss, sort of miss, even though it wasn't the best kind of plane. Um, I, I sort of miss it. That was an interesting sort of plane that I haven't gotten to fly in a long time in a sim. So anyway, we are on our way into Rome here. The lag is serious, frankly. I mean, that's just how it is. I think you can see Vatican City down there. Here we are approaching Circus Maximus and the Colosseum there. And later on we can see the huge distinctive terminal at Rome. I don't know what it's called, but uh, you can see it on satellite maps. It's huge. And here we are uh, at the airport. The airport is actually pretty far away from Rome itself. It's on the coast. It's like one of those international airports there. It takes a fair drive to get into the actual city. There's LIRF, there's uh, Leonardo, Leonardo da Vinci uh, Fiumicino Airport, I think. I always mix up whether I'm supposed to have a hard C or a soft C in the Italian names. Anyway, here we are, and touchdown. Alright, very good. And next up, I'll have another Italian plane. There's still a lot of compression artifacts here. Again, the later flights are gonna be a lot better because I have the original video still. So this is the 20th flight and the last flight of this video. There's an Aramachi MB339. This is a jet trainer. And we are flying from Rome to Venice this time. This is a freeware plane by Paolo Zam. 
again on the xplane.org forum. The previous plane, the P180 Avanti, was also a freeware plane, I believe. It's the version by Sean McLeod. So we are going across Italy and ultimately arrive on the east coast of Italy and then I go a little bit further north to approach Venice. The Venice scenery was imported from Flight Sim 10, so it was actually Flight, Tim, uh, Flight Sim 10 scenery originally, and very good scenery, though again performance <laughs> is wanting here, but yeah, it's uh, very, very scenic. I will be very interested to see what Venice looks like in Microsoft Flight Sim 2020. You can see the photo scenery things where the patches of photo scenery don't quite have color matching there. But yeah, still a joy to behold. And the airport is very close by, it's just uh, on the coast of the lagoon. And this is LIPZ at Venice. So altogether, the 20 flights featured in this video were 5,980 nautical miles. They took 22 hours and 15 minutes and the average speed was 268 knots, mainly helped by the Concorde. The Concorde did, uh, that one flight f with the Concorde from St. John's to Keflavik was 1,393 nautical miles, so that helped quite a bit. But yeah, I'll produce the rest of the flights in three subsequent videos. Hopefully you enjoyed this one. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.